While wrestling fans will tweet some really dumb crap, wrestlers are the worst. You really wonder sometimes if they either A should have social media classes or B just not bother with social media at all. Because it seems like a lot of them don't really get the concept of how it really works and are too bothered by what too many people say uh, to use it as a device to, you know, garner some new interest in their product or potentially make more money. Um, and every time it seems like I go on Twitter, I see an example of a wrestler tweeting something really stupid that makes them look like the biggest mark in the freaking world. Yes, professional wrestling fans are marks. Obviously, I'm a mark. Those of you that watch this video are marks. Those of you that are going to comment on this video after watching this video about professional wrestling that try to play the cool cat that either A, sticks up for Sienna because you're a dumbass, or B, you want to sit there and be the counterculture guy, you're a fucking mark too. But beyond question, the biggest marks are professional wrestlers. And Sienna gave us a perfect example of that today, just how big of a raging mark she is. Here is some of what she tweeted, and I'll try to read it verbatim so I don't take anything out of context. The first tweet for the day was, Every time a mark comments about Impact Wrestling payer contracts, I laugh and book myself a tropical vacation. Enjoy your 9 to 5 you hate. Uh, there's literally not enough days in the year for that based off of how many people comment on Global Force Wrestling's pay in, in the past, TNA's pay. And isn't it typically wrestlers who put that shit out there on the internet? So, but the fans are the problem? Yeah, you could say they're just regurgitating this stuff that they've heard. But, again, that information didn't just come out of thin air. We didn't just pull it out of our asses. Nah, you just meant to feel entitled to private financial matters more than caring about actual wrestling. This is the problem, and I do that for the clap emojis. The problem, as in the number one problem in professional wrestling? Now look. As somebody who focuses a lot on the business aspects of professional wrestling, specifically WWE, I can agree at times that it can take away from other aspects of professional wrestling. Um, but the number one problem? Not idiotic owners of wrestling companies. Not people in positions of creative power that have absolutely no clue what the hell they're doing, have no business having their position, and are out of touch with modern times. Not wrestlers who don't know how to be personalities, that don't know how to work their way out of a fucking paper bag. None of those are the problem, right? And if anything, CNA, you stupid idiot, trying to savage potential paying customers would be a much bigger problem. That's just bad business. You have all types of companies out there in the social media world. They have entire departments dedicated to responding to bad tweets, bad Facebook posts, bad Instagram posts from customers or prospective customers. Entire departments dedicated to that. They have social media teams whose one job is to go throughout the internet and find things said about the company that aren't good and respond to them before they become a bigger issue. But if they took the professional wrestling approach of just bashing customers and prospective customers... Imagine how much it would hurt these companies' bottom line. But when you're an idiot like Sienna and so many other in professional wrestling, that's exactly what you set out to do. Then she tweeted, literally just added two more days in my vacation. Every time you tweet me, you put more money in my pocket. I'm almost up to a two full weeks in the Dominican Republic. I'm pretty sure that's not how Twitter works, especially for you. I'm pretty sure that's not how any of it works. And I'm just saying, why not use social media as a platform to try and engage more fans, to get more fans interested, to get more fans to watch your television product, to get more fans to come see you live. And if anything else, when it all breaks down, maybe we should talk a little more shit when we can draw 500 people to a house show in New York. Just saying. Just saying. But this whole thing of talking shit about people that uh, work 9 to 5 and enjoy the 9 to 5 that you hate, it's just, where does that seem like that's a good idea in business? And don't just give me the standard, she's a heel, that's heel shit. No, that's just dumb shit. I could imagine back in the day, freaking heels sitting there tweeting out shit, Roddy Roddy Piper talking about, and, da, 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 da. and even if he did, he would have talked about all you nine to five bums 
can't even sit there and put a decent shirt on your back, but you're going to sit there and buy that Hulk Hogan merchandise or something. But you better come pay money if you want to see this because I'm going to put Hulk Hogan out of business. He would tie it back to business and actually trying to draw some money is the point I'm getting at. This is just dumb shit where you're acting like a crybaby butthurt mark because you're mad that people would talk about pay issues. Like, focus on your own shit. And if we really want to go there, and we really, truly want to talk shit about people that work in the real world, let's ask Sienna some questions. How's that company provided health insurance? Oh, that's right. You're a professional wrestler. You don't get that shit. How's that company provided 401k? You know the thing that you don't fucking get that is supposed to help you save money for retirement? Exactly. How's that tax rate? Oh, that's right. Because you're a wrestler and all of you in the business decide to not unionize, exercise no leverage at all, no unity of any kind, you're in a hurry to drop trial just so that way you could do something you love to where as an independent contractor, a company is not required to provide you any benefits of any kind. And furthermore, doesn't have to pay their portion of the social security tax. So your tax rate is higher than the marks that you bash. What's that like? What's it like having weekends off? You know, weekends, the thing that the nine to five crew has off when they come to watch professional wrestling in person, but clearly not global force wrestling house shows. Oh, that's right. You wouldn't know about that because you work in wrestling. So you typically have to work most every weekend. If you want to make any type of money in the business again, Who's the fucking mark here? What's it like to work wherever you want outside of Global Force Wrestling? Oh, that's right. Because even though you sign a contract as an independent contractor, there is an exclusivity portion of that that says that Global Force Wrestling, or if you work for somebody else, same deal, that they have to sign off on where you work. And then they get a percentage for where you work. With where I work at a big credit card company slash bank as long as it's not something that is a direct competition like somebody legitimately competing with them they're not going to care if I worked somewhere else or consulted somewhere else or did anything like that but for you you have to literally get every appearance approved by the office even if it is some beatnik freaking indie show that's never going to see the light of day you got to get all of that approved what's that like but again, keep talking trash about the nine to fivers. I mean, ultimately, who would sign a contract where they get no 401k, no pension, no health insurance, have to pay a higher tax rate, get little to no weekends off, and have a company that tells them where they can work and when, and if they don't want them to work there, they can't work there, which potentially takes money out of your pocket, food off of your table. I'll tell you who signs those type of contracts. Marks who are desperate for a job in professional wrestling. You hear the old saying from like Dirty Dutch Mantel and others, it used to be so much better in the business when the marks were out there in the seats. Sounds cool. Kind of a dumb statement because frankly, the marks have always been in professional wrestling because they were the ones that were either marks for the business or marks for themselves first. And I'll ask you, Sienna, these questions. How's it going to be in 20 years when wrestling's forgotten all about you and you have no 401k, you have no pension, you have no employer-provided health insurance? How's it going to be when your body is beat to hell, especially if you stay in the business another 10, 15 years and you're hopped up on all these freaking painkillers, you can barely move your day-to-day -day life is absolutely miserable, and then you still, guess what, have to go out there and become one of those 9-to-5 marks. What's that going to be like? I don't care personally if somebody calls me a mark because it is what I fucking am. I don't run from that. I'm not ashamed of that. And why would I be? I'm not ashamed of being a wrestling fan mark. What I would be ashamed of is being a professional wrestling mark, the people in the business, the actual professional wrestlers. I look at myself. What I make a year with my full-time job and then the stuff doing on YouTube, probably right around 48 to 50K. All right, so it's okay. Lower middle class for sure. But with that said, 
I get a 401k from my employer where they just give me 6% of my salary. They just give it to me. And if I put anything more in, I get even more. I get 6% up front. I get health benefits from my company, thank God, where they pay the vast majority of the health insurance cost. Because if they did it and I had to go outside of the tax shelter of employer provided health insurance, I would not be able to afford it. I'm just saying. I'm also the person that gets just a teensy weensy bit of fuck off money from YouTube each month to come on here and talk about sports. And in this case, professional wrestling all the while making as much money per year between all of these different sources as the vast majority of the people trying to sit there and grind and make a living in the professional wrestling business. All the while I'm home every night. I have Friday, Saturdays and Sundays off. I get five weeks of vacation a year. You know, vacation, that thing that a company gives you as a benefit where they pay you to not work. Good luck with that in professional wrestling, other than if you're lucky enough to work with a big enough company that is not Global Force Wrestling where they give you some type of downside guarantee and there's even drawbacks to that. I take zero bumps. If I don't want to go be bothered with a bunch of people in public, I don't have to be. And you have none of that going for you. But you're going to trash on nine to five marks and try to talk shit about, oh, this is helping you pay for a vacation. Who gives a shit, bitch? Like nobody sits there and pays for fucking vacations. And frankly, frankly, if we want to go big baller shit here, there are plenty of wrestling fans that spend vastly more sums of money going to professional wrestling shows over a course of a year, especially for WrestleMania weekend, than you would on one of your lousy uh, coach flight fucking trips to the Dominican Republic on a mediocre hotel in a suspect ass beach. Like if I wanted to, I put together some money and go on a trip to the Dominican Republic or Brazil or wherever the fuck I wanted to go. That in no way is any indication that you are any type of special. That's just dumb. Social media should be a tool to drive new customers to wrestling. Get current customers to spend more. Not a place where you act like a butthurt crybaby who dishes out dipshit insults that do neither of those things I just mentioned and frankly make you look pathetic. Again, you see this with wrestling Twitter almost every day. Somebody tweets out something and it just screams out who's the fucking mark here. In an ideal world, it would be better if idiots like me were the marks. But the biggest raging marks of all are the people like Sienna who decide instead of trying to do things that actually draw, garner interest and potentially draw money, they would rather sit there and throw pot shots and insults at paying customers. Because again, that's a good mis business model, right? <laughs> Dumb bitch. Not a surprise though, is it? No. But you'll notice all these wrestlers that like to talk all that shit. When you start bringing up some of this crap, they shut the fuck up real quick. And my suggestion to a lot of these wrestlers when it comes to social media and the internet, it's a savage place. And if you can't stand the heat, get the fuck out of the kitchen or nut up and grow the fuck up and deal with it. 